Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, one of the best proofs of the rotating spherical Earth is sunrise and sunset. Now this is a photograph I took not long ago of a sunset. The sun has already set out in the west and you can tell that the Earth is spherical simply looking at this one image. For example, you notice that the high altitude clouds are kind of a reddish pink color, whereas the low altitude clouds in the foreground are dark and gray. That's because the sun is below the horizon of the earth and it, the light from the sun is coming upward and illuminating those high clouds while the lower clouds are in shadow. That brings up an excellent topic that I'd like to discuss a little bit and that is the concept of twilight. So let's take a moment and talk about the three different types of twilight, civil, nautical, and astronomical and what they tell us about this wonderful earth that we live on. So cue up the music and let's go. Now to begin our talk about sunrise and sunset and twilight, we should go to time and date. Now this is the time and date page for the sun calendar for Mount Pleasant, Michigan 48858. This is a town that's on the same longitude that I am, so this will give us a very good idea of what's going on. And I'm going to show you how to read it real quick. Now as you can see up here, we go from January 1st up to December 31st. Now the light colored area here is the period of daytime. Now you'll notice that there's a jump right here and right here. This is daylight savings time. Now you can see where the cursor is right now. This is June 21st. This is called the June solstice. The sun is at 23 and a half degrees north latitude. That's its declination. And it's at the point that it's farthest north during its journey throughout the year. Now, in December, on December 21st, which is going to be about right out here, that's called the December solstice, and that is when the sun's declination is at 23 and a half degrees south latitude. It's at its far southern extreme. The equinox is in March and September when the sun is directly over the equator. Now, let's go ahead and have a look at this graph a little closer. Now, the dark areas are obviously night. The light areas are obviously day. But you notice right down here, they've got some bands. Now, these are the twilight bands. They're not an artifact of the graphic. They're actually denoting something, and that is the times of the three types of twilight. Now, twilight is what we would normally consider dawn and dusk. But there are three distinct phases. The first phase is called civil twilight. The second phase is called nautical twilight, and the third phase is called astronomical twilight. So let's go through those individually. Now probably the best way to describe the different types of twilight is to actually show them to you. This is what's called civil twilight. Now this is a photograph I took this evening outside of my house. As you can tell, the sky is rather overcast. The albedo of the ground is quite high because we're covered with snow. One of the things that you'll notice about this is first of all, there are no shadows in this. Second of all, if you look at the trees out here, you can see distinct details. You know, these trees are a little bit dark, but you can definitely see underneath them. You can see some details in the sky. You can see the pattern of clouds up here. Because of the scattering of light in the upper atmosphere, there's enough ambient light out there that you can read without artificial light. You can make out details. You can clearly see. You can, uh, you can take part in outside activities without the need for artificial light. There's enough light here for you to catch a baseball. Now, at my latitude, civil twilight lasts approximately 30 minutes after the sun vanishes below my westerly horizon. Now, because there's so much light out here, you don't see lights in the houses. You don't see cars with their headlights on. Uh, in civil aviation, if you were to fly at this time of night, this would not count as night flight, even though the sun is below the horizon. Let's have a look at the next stage of twilight, nautical twilight. Now, civil twilight is defined both legally and astronomically 
as the period between sunset, which is when the sun disappears below the western horizon, and the time that the center of the sun is six degrees below the horizon. Now, when the sun is between six and 12 degrees below the horizon, we have something called nautical twilight. Now, nautical twilight is what you see right now, and nautical twilight is very important for a number of reasons. Now, in civil twilight, you may be able to see some particularly bright stars and planets. For example, it's pretty easy to see Venus and Jupiter during civil twilight. During nautical twilight, some of the more important stars are starting to come out, specifically the navigation stars. And while it's dark enough for the major navigational stars to be seen, there's enough light for you to make out the difference between the surface of the sea and the sky above it. As a result, this is the time that you do your evening star sights in celestial navigation. Second of all, this is very important in military applications. Now, the reason that it's important in military applications is the characteristics of nautical twilight that differentiate it from civil twilight. And these differences are pretty obvious in this picture. Now, first of all, my porch light has been on this whole time, including during civil twilight. But now you're starting to see my shadow. You're starting to see lights come on, and you notice that the area under the trees, it's very difficult to make out any detail here. So if you're planning a military operation, what you want to do is you want to sneak up on the bad guys when it's dark. And you want to have a little concealment in those shadows so that maybe they don't see you quite as quickly. And then once you start your operation at the beginning of nautical twilight, which is called beginning morning nautical twilight in the military or ending evening nautical twilight, for when the sun is setting. You want the light to be steadily increasing so you can see what you're doing. So you want the concealment coming in, but then you want to have enough light to do what you need to do. Now another good application of this is deer hunting. So by the time you're getting into nautical twilight, you can tell whether or not that deer has antlers. And you also have enough light to shoot if they're out in the open. Now when the center of the sun is between 12 and 18 degrees below the horizon, you're in a period of what's called astronomical twilight. Now, during astronomical twilight, all but the dimmest of stars and galaxies are out, and you can begin to use your telescope. However, you don't have enough light to be able to tell the difference between the sky and the surface of the water. You certainly cannot see in any of those shadows. The trees themselves are becoming a silhouette rather than a distinct three-dimensional object. We're starting to get very strong shadows, and even though this was a half-second exposure, it's still quite dark out, and you certainly can't do things outside without artificial light. Now, the sky still has some light in it, and that is because I live in a small town in Michigan. Now, my skies are borely three to four grade, and that means that I have some light pollution from street lights. You can see that there's quite a few lights in the houses, Notice how bright the street is. That's a reflection of how long the exposure on this image is. And even the little areas of roughening in the snow are starting to cast some shadows. We're not at night just yet, but we're getting pretty close. And in a small town like mine that has light pollution, it's very difficult to tell the difference between astronomical twilight and true night because there's light pollution on the clouds and in the sky. So just to quickly recap, Sunset is when the sun dips below the western horizon. The upper limb of the sun is no longer visible. Civil twilight is the period of time from that moment until the center of the sun is six degrees below the horizon. And then we go into nautical twilight, which is when the center of the sun is between six and 12 degrees below the horizon, followed by astronomical twilight, which is 12 to 18 degrees below the horizon. Now over on Slide Rules and Mathematics, which is my STEM channel, we're talking about the astrolabe right now, and this is an astrolabe. Now, a couple of things that are pertinent to our discussion today is on the astrolabe, this dark line right here is the horizontal line. The open space here in the center, that's our zenith. And the nut right here is the position of the North Star. But what I want to talk about is the horizon. So when the sun's position hits this horizon line, that's going to be sunrise. Now when it hits the horizon line over here on the west, 
that's when sunset occurs. But what I want to draw your attention to are these three dotted lines right here. This dotted line right here is six degrees below the horizon. This is the limit of civil twilight. Right here, and you can't, it's a little difficult to see, but it's right behind that dark line. This is 12 degrees below the horizon, and that is the limit of nautical twilight. And finally, down here, we have astronomical twilight. So if you'd like to learn a little bit more about telling time with an astrolabe, tune in tomorrow over on Slide Rules and Mathematics. Now let's go back over to time and date for Mount Pleasant, Michigan. Again, here is the entire year graphically described, and you see civil, nautical, and astronomical twilight, followed by night. Well, let's go ahead and have a look at today's reading. So here's today in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. A couple of things that I want to point out. First of all, here's the date, and here is the path of the sun during the course of the 24 hours of the 25th of January, 2022. Now, a couple of things are noted here. Sunrise is noted at 8.02 a.m. and sunset is at 5.40 p.m. Solar noon will be 12.51. Now, solar noon is when the sun is directly south, 180 degrees of your position, and it's at the zenith of its path through the sky. Now, at the center of the eastern time zone is longitude 75. Now, at solar noon at longitude 75, when the sun is directly due south of Albany, New York, that would be solar noon. Now the earth rotates one degree every four minutes from west to east. So if it's 12 noon at solar noon in Albany, New York, it will be solar noon at my location here in Michigan at 1236 because there are nine degrees of longitude between Albany, New York in my location here. Solar noon for me today was at 1251. That's because of something called the equation of time. Now, if the Earth was in a perfectly circular orbit around the Sun, every day it would be 12 noon at Albany, New York at solar noon. When it was solar noon for me, it would be 1236. However, the Earth is not in a circular orbit. It's in an elliptical orbit. And on January 4th, we're the closest to the sun, and six months later in the summer, we're at our farthest point from the sun. Now, as we come in closer to the sun, our orbital speed, as in degrees per day, is going to be a little faster than it is when we're further away in the summer. And because of that variation in our orbital speed due to our distance from the sun, Solar noon may come a few minutes early or a few minutes late. As a matter of fact, it varies by about 15 minutes, plus or minus. And as a result, today in Albany, New York, solar noon is going to be about 12.15 p.m. It's going to be delayed by 15 minutes. And as a result, we have to add that 15 minutes to the 36 minutes delay from our longitude. And as you can see, our solar noon here is at 12.51. Now, right above it, I want you to have a look at this table. Now, for example, right here, you see where it says civil twilight? Well, these are the times of civil twilight. Now, civil twilight will begin approximately 30 minutes before dawn. And since dawn is at 8.02, that means that it's going to be about 7.32. And as you can see right here, it's 7.31. And in the evening, civil twilight ends at 6.11 p.m. Likewise, about half an hour on either side of that, we're going to have nautical twilight, and you can see that right here. And then astronomical twilight will be another 30 or 40 minutes later, and as you see there, it's about 7.20 p.m. And if you check the morning times, you'll see that the pattern continues there as well. Okay, so let's for a moment imagine that this is the sun. Now the sun has an angular size. It's 32 arc minutes, which is just over half a degree. It's eight fifteenths of a degree, so to say. So how long would it take the sun to set? Well, at the equator during the equinox, the sun is going directly over your head from east to your zenith to the west, and it's traveling at 15 degrees per hour. That means that when you get to the western horizon, the time between the period where the sun just touches the horizon until it just disappears below the horizon, 
is going to be just a hair over two minutes. Now, what happens if you travel north or south of the equator? Well, continuing our model of the equinox, the sun is going directly over the equator. If you go north of the equator, the sun is going to form an arc to your south. It will not pass through your zenith, it'll have a declination to it. If you're in the tropics, its declination will be quite high, but during the equinox, the only place the sun can be directly at your zenith is over the equator. As you move north and south, it's going to come down at an angle. And as a result, instead of coming straight down to the western horizon, it's going to come in at an angle. So here we're gonna start sunset, and then part of that 15 degrees per hour is going to be moving to the side, and eventually it's going to come down and go below. However, it's going to take longer than if it went straight down through it. You see that angle adds time to the sunset. Likewise, that angle adds time to the periods of twilight. Because recall, twilight is defined as where the center of the sun is in reference to the horizon. If it's coming straight down, you're going to get you're going to go right through the twilights rather quickly. If it's coming in at an angle because you're at, say, 45 degrees north latitude, it's going to take about 30 minutes to go through each of those phases. The other thing that will prolong sunset and sunrise and the phases of twilight is whether or not you're at a solstice or you're at the equinox. It will be shortest during the equinox. It will be longest during whatever solstice is the summer solstice for your hemisphere. Now that gives rise to a very interesting problem for astronomers. Now when you start getting towards the poles, say at 49 or 50 degrees north or south latitude, you start running into a problem. Because of the tilt of the Earth, if you're near the solstice for your hemisphere, your day becomes very long. The sunset is prolonged and the phases of your twilight are very prolonged. Your night, on the other hand, is much shorter. Now, imagine that you're an astronomer in Canada and you want to look at a very dim galaxy. The only time that you're going to see a very dim galaxy is after astronomical twilight, which means that the center of the sun is 18 degrees below the horizon. However, you can run into a situation, say around 49 or 50 degrees or even further north or south, and that is that you'll have sunset, you'll have a prolonged civil twilight, you'll have a prolonged nautical twilight, you'll have a prolonged astronomical twilight, and then what happens? You immediately go into astronomical twilight for the next dawn, then into nautical, and then into civil twilight, and then all of a sudden the sun's up. You never really have true night. You have astronomical twilight from sunset, butting into astronomical twilight from sunrise. So as a result, the only time you can see those dim objects up in Canada is that you have to do it around the equinox or you have to go out in the winter. If you're gonna be an astronomer in Canada, you had better be a hearty soul because Michigan's cold, Canada's even colder. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Go ahead and join me tomorrow on Slide Rules and Mathematics where we talk about the astrolabe, and its relationship to time. So until then, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. If you ever consider becoming a channel member or a Patreon, now would be a great time to do it. There's some links in the description. Take care, guys. Bye.